Ephesians. Four. Mm. 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 Seven. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But on to every <clears throat> one of us. Hmm. Unto every one of us. Hmm. Look at somebody and say, you're one of us. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Hmm. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto mankind. Hmm. He that went up came down. That he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. What we call ministry gifts or ascension gifts or fivefold gifts, God set in the church. Now, up until this point in time, for the most part, most ministry, hmm. Most ministry has happened through those gifts. However, that's not necessarily God's plan. The next verse tells us his plan. They were set in the church for the maturing of the saints. Yeah. Hmm. Why? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ <laughs> until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of of the Son of God unto a mature person unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hmm. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, hmm. maketh increase of the body 
on to the edifying of itself in love. Hmm. Your part is vital. Tell somebody, my part is vital. Tell somebody else, your part is vital. Now, just an observation. It was easier for most of you to tell somebody else their part was vital. It was harder for you to say, my part is vital. <laughs> Your part is vital. Now, the gifts were not set by the Lord Jesus Christ in the church. I'm talking about what we call fivefold or ascension giftings, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. They were not set in the church for the sole purpose of displaying ministry. The purpose is to develop you Amen. in your giftings and callings. Yes. Father, I thank you right now. Every gift, every calling, every anointing, every grace, every office is fulfilled in the lives of your people. Father God, I thank you for Increase, 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 increase in the lives of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to read part of this, uh, verses 10 through 16 from the Message Bible, because I hope it'll help you get the message. And the one who climbed down <clears throat> is the one who climbed back up. Up to the highest heaven, he handed out gifts above and below, filled heaven with his gifts, filled earth with his gifts. He handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor, teacher, to train Christians in skilled servant work. Working within Christ's body, the church, until we're all <clears throat> moving rhythmically and easily with each other. Efficient and graceful in response to God's Son. Fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. <clears throat> no prolonged infancies among us, please. will not tolerate babes in the woods. Small children who are an easy mark for imposters. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and tell it in love. Like Christ in everything, we take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. <laughs> he keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God robust in love. Yeah. 
It's time to grow. It's time to grow. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how long you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. It's time to grow. It's time to expand what you've been doing. Now, I know some of you are out ministering, but God wants all of us out ministering. There is no such thing as a non-ministering Christian. If that's been your take on Christianity, you're sadly wrong. There is no such thing as a non-ministering Christian. Now, I've heard people over the years tell me, uh, Brother Arnold, I just, I just want to love God and and come to church and get fed and you know my 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 religion is a private thing excuse me jesus said go tell it's time for show and tell and i love the testimonies of what god's doing and I know some of you are active, but you're going to get more active. And some of you have been inactive, and you're going to become active because that's God's plan. Um, it, uh, It takes faith to exercise what God has given us. It takes faith to grow. You became a Christian by grace through faith. That measure of faith that God gave to every man produced the greatest miracle we'll ever receive. A number of years ago, I was pressing God for more miracles and more healings. And we happened to be down on the border of Texas and Mexico. And um, actually, I was reading one of Brother Branham's books. And I said to the Lord, why aren't we seeing the same kind of manifestations? And the Lord asked me a question. He said, do you know the greatest miracle man will ever receive? I should have known the answer, but I didn't. I said, no. He said, the new birth. I said, wow, I should have known that. And then the Lord said, do you know why it's the greatest miracle man will ever receive? Well, I didn't know the answer to that either. <laughs> you know, I had some thoughts, but I learned a long time ago when God answer, asks you questions, it's wise to wait for his answers. <laughs> and I said, no, why? He said, because I change your very nature. He said, it takes a greater miracle to change the nature of something that exists than it does to create something new. Think about that. Hallelujah. I mean, you can create a new species of apple, but think about creating changing the molecular structure of an apple that already exists. God changed your DNA. You see, we have his DNA. Stands for his divine nature and ability. 
DNA, divine nature and ability. When you became a Christian, that became your DNA. You became new creatures. Behold, old things are passed away. Hmm. We have a new DNA. The book of Joshua, and I'm going to begin in the first chapter and the third verse. God speaking to Joshua said, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Now I want you to take that personally. Because the Bible's a personal experience. He said, Every place the sole of your foot shall tread, I've given unto you. That means the authority. The DNA that God's put in our lives will work anywhere you go. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be anyone able to hinder you. All the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be (laughs) with you. Say, God is with me. God said, I will not fail thee. Say that. God will not fail me. Mm. Nor will he forsake us. He's with us wherever we go. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. God says this three times in three verses. Why? Because it's going to take faith, strength, Courage in God to do the will of God. To receive the blessings and promises of God. You have to look adversity in the face and laugh. (laughs) You said what, devil? Hmm. Hmm. There's a, there's a strong anointing in this house. Amen. Pastor James was speaking about teeth. There's somebody got a, a tooth back here. That is the left side that God's ministering to right now. There's somebody else that's been having chest pains and in this pit of the left arm. God's ministering to that right now. Hmm. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance all that I swore unto their fathers. Hmm. Only be strong and very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong 
and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. This is an old covenant principle. Let's transfer it into the new covenant. Be strong and courageous. Be very strong and very courageous. <clears throat> the new covenant, the law of the new covenant is our identity in Christ. Who we are in Christ and what belongs to us in Christ. So we could read this then, be strong and very courageous, talking about the inheritance that God has given to his people. Be very strong, be courageous that you may observe to do according to all of his promises. Turn not from it to the left hand. Turn not from it to the right hand. Don't get hung up in all the minutia. This relationship shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on who you are and whose you are, and what belongs to you day and night, that you may do according to all that has been written. Hmm. For then shall you make your way prosperous, and then shall you have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For I am with you wherever you go. You see, anytime we go back to the Old Testament, we have to translate that into the New Testament. The Old Testament was types and shadows of the New we live under a new covenant, not a covenant of the law, but a covenant of the spirit of life who set us free from the curse of the law. So it's so important for us to meditate on who we are, to know who we are and what belongs to us. You see, it's difficult for people to grow when they accept and receive the lies of the enemy. It's even difficult for people to grow sometimes under the tutelage of their natural parents. And many times it's difficult for people to grow under spiritual tutelage because if you're... If, if, if I, if, I, if I, as a leader, don't receive what God's trying to do in you, I could hold you back. Unfortunately, that's been the case many times in the church. We, as leaders, have listened to people say, uh, she's not ready for that. He's not ready for that. Pastor, don't put that person in that position. Do you know this about him? Do you know that about him? Come on. Now, there is a maturing process. Understand that. But we need to be empowering people and releasing the giftedness in people. And Brother Hagin used to say this. He said, a little wildfire is better than no fire at all. Come on. And uh, even if you get a little wild, that's okay. Step out. 
So it takes faith, strength, and courage to operate in what God's given us. That's why faith is so important. Jesus, in Mark, Mark, Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. What does that leave out? Uh, uh, that, that word all is confusing to us. I don't know if it's the A or the double L, but we get messed up on all. Jesus said all things. Yeah, I know, Pastor, but you don't know my situation. See, if you knew my situation, uh, I'm dealing with this. No, Jesus didn't say all things are possible except in these extenuating circumstances. He said, if you can believe, if you can believe, look at somebody and say, I believe. All things are possible. Hmm. Mark 11, 23 and 24. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you'll have them. When do you believe? When you pray. When do you believe? When you say. See, here's the thing. So many of us have been convinced that we don't have enough faith to produce what God told us to produce. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. Uh, you receive the greatest miracle mankind will ever receive, the new birth, with that measure of faith God gave to everyone. That word measure there is the word metron, which means a small but measurable amount. So God already gave us enough faith to receive the greatest miracle. Jesus talked about mustard seed faith, which is the least amount of faith anyone can have. And Jesus taught that if you had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, all things were possible. So don't ever let anyone or the enemy tell you you don't have the faith. What we must learn to do is release the faith that we already have. Most people fail to recognize the faith they already have. You know, Pastor James Fortune is a wonderful man. He's a wonderful man of God. He's very anointed. I'd really like to see him. You know, if somebody could really show me where Pastor James is, I would be so blessed to be in his presence. You know, Pastor James is a real blessing, and he's such an encourager and such an empower. Wouldn't you like to be with him? Wouldn't you just like to be in the same place with him? I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could, we, if we could just end up in the same place with him and spend some time with him? You see, that's what a lot of people do to faith. Faith is in us and amongst us, but we fail to recognize we're looking for some supernatural manifestation to reveal the faith we already have, rather than acknowledging the fact that Pastor James is sitting here blessing us, his presence, his anointing, everything that God has put in him is available to us right now. 
but we could go throughout the whole serve, rest of the service not acknowledging his presence here. And we could be desirous of his presence and talk about him and wish he was here, but never acknowledge his presence. You see, the Holy Spirit's present wherever you are. Yes. Your faith is present wherever you are. The other thing we must know about faith is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, now faith is. See, here's why a lot of Christians get frustrated with faith, because they think they're in faith and they're not. And I can identify within five to ten seconds whether somebody's in faith or not when they begin to talk to me. Because as soon as they put it in future tense, I know they're not in faith. Well, I know God's going to heal me. That's not faith, that's hope. Well, I know that God uh, is going to manifest himself one day. That's faith, not hope. I mean, that's hope, not faith. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, when somebody says to me, Pastor, I already know I'm healed. Brother Arnold, I know I'm healed. I've already received my healing. They might not look like it, but that's faith talking. I'm already prospered. Huh. I'm already doing the works of the ministry. I'm already functioning in what God has for me. You see, that's because faith is always now. It's never in the future. If faith is in the future, it's hope. Faith is now. Why am I spending a little time? I don't have a lot of time to spend on this. And I told Pastor James I'm trying to push three messages into one this morning. Because everything you'll ever get from God comes through faith by grace. It's all a free gift, but you have to believe to receive. Now listen, um, Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you should say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it should be re removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing. I want you to think of the couple, couple of the greatest impossibilities in your life at this moment. Things that you don't know how they'd ever change or how they could change or and then just say this. Thank you, Lord. I believe. You see, the glory of God is our DNA. His divine nature and ability. Now, many people interpret the glory in many different ways. And we could go back to the Hebrew and go into Kabod. We can go into the Greek and go into Shekinah. We could do all the definitions. But basically, the glory's manifested in three ways. It's the glory in you. Christ, the hope of glory, in you. So we are all carriers of God's glory. And why faith is so impart, important is because a lot of people won't reach out and try to touch somebody else because they think it has to do with them. Their natural DNA doesn't. It has to do with your spiritual DNA, who you are in Christ Jesus. If he doesn't show up, we can all forget it. And then there's the glory that comes upon. We call that the anointing. So there's the glory that resides within us, all of us. Then there's a grace that comes on us, a gifting that comes on us. We call that the anointing. And then there's the glory that just falls around us. 
Now, most times people are seeking the glory that falls. What we really ought to be seeking is the glory that's within. His divine nature and ability resides in all of us. In John 11, verse 40, Jesus said unto her, talking to one of Lazarus' sisters, said I not unto you that if you would believe, you should see the glory of God? Listen, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. Not only fall, not only come on, but you'll begin to see more and more of it that resides on the inside of you. John 17, 22, Jesus said, And the glory which you gave me, He's talking to the Father. He said, the glory which you gave me, I give to them. That they may be one, even as we are one. We have to guard our hearts so that we don't shut ourselves off to different flows and different anointings in the kingdom of God, in the body. We are way too quick to judge something, whether it's right or it's wrong. Let's just let us flow. Let us flow. See, you can't leave behind. God always builds on what he's already put in your life. You can't leave. You can never go away from the doctrines of faith. It's going to take faith to operate in everything that God gives us. We can't leave behind the principles and the truths that God has given to us. What we must do is just like Jesus said when he came. He said, I didn't come to do away with that which is old. I didn't come to do away with the law, I came to fulfill it. Huh. There's a fulfillment. My. The glory which God gave to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus in turn gave to you and I. Uh, we could put it this way, the authority to function. The authority to function that God gave Jesus. Jesus gave to you and I. Everywhere we are, hmm. whether corporately together as the church, individually as the church, whether we're in a worship setting, a work setting, or a play setting, we must create an atmosphere of expectancy. An atmosphere of expectancy, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah, an atmosphere of expectancy. I don't know who's been having problems with your knees, but God's dealing with them right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Create an atmosphere of expectancy wherever you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I'm fixing the clothes. I always wondered what that meant. And I'm not sure I, I'm still not sure I know. I know it has something to do with bringing things to a conclusion. John 14 12 through 14. Jesus is speaking. You know how I know that? It's in red in my Bible. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you. In other words, he's saying, listen up. Listen up. This is important. He that believes on me, we got any believers in here? Yes. He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall they do also. And greater works than these shall they do, because I <laughs> go unto my Father. <laughs> and whatsoever you ask. Who's doing the asking here? Yeah. <laughs> and whatsoever you ask. <laughs> Whatsoever you ask <laughs> in my name, that will I do. <laughs> that the Father uh, may be glorified <laughs> in the Son. Who's getting glorified? The Father. <laughs> Who's doing the asking? We are. We are. Hmm. If you shall ask anything uh, what's not included in that? If you shall ask <laughs> anything in my name I will do it create an atmosphere of expectancy when you come here on Sunday morning come expecting God to use you. When you stop at the gas station on the way to church, lay a few people out in the driveway. When you go to Starbucks or any other bucks, begin to minister. Everywhere you go, create an at mm, an app. Mm -hmm. 
an atmosphere of expectancy. This operates according to he that believes on me. You're not believing on you. It's not about you, not about me. <laughs> We're believing on him. <laughs> We're believing on him. <laughs> The works that I do, Jesus said, you'll do. And greater works. Now here's how the devil messes people up. He'll get you to try to focus on the greater works. Well, what does he mean by the greater works? I mean, what greater works can I do to you? No, don't even go there. Just start doing the works he did and we'll all be fine. Just start. Just start saving those that are lost. Just start bringing them into the kingdom. Just start uh, delivering the captives, setting the captives free. Just start ministering to the brokenhearted. <laughs> Just start bringing sight to those that are blind. <laughs> Just start healing those that are oppressed. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> time to grow. It's time to start doing that which God has anointed us to do. Huh.